15 minute cities, 20 minute neighborhoods. There's a lot of controversy about these concepts around the world, but let's see what's going on here in Scotland. So I've got the document from the government's website. Here it is. This is all about their local living and 20 minute neighborhoods philosophy. Uh, let's see what it's got to say. So I'll start off, uh, Nicola Sturgeon had a, a comment on the Scottish Government website a while ago. It seems to have gone now. But she basically said, during the pandemic lockdowns, we didn't travel as far, we stayed more locally, and so that was good. But now that the lockdowns are finished, we're getting back into our old habits, implication, our old bad habits. So like, if only we could maintain what we had during lockdowns, which I'm not sure many people would, uh, would agree with that. Uh, but that seems to have disappeared from the Scottish Government's website now. Uh, but in Scotland, 15-minute cities, that's not the jargon they're using. They're saying 20-minute uh, neighbourhoods. So let's read a bit here from the executive summary. The complex challenges we face from climate, from the climate and the nature crisis. Right, that's the first thing they say, climate and nature crisis. I mean, this is basically a town planning policy. It's about where do you put the school, where do you put the shops, what roads and footpaths, where do you want parks or whatever. That's the sort of thing. So you might have thought the first priority might have been people, local people. What do people need? But no, 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 no. This is the Scottish government in association with the Greens. So therefore, the number one thing they're talking about is the climate and nature crisis. Uh, why is there a nature crisis in Scotland? I can tell you why there's a nature crisis, because the Greens are in government. Whenever the Greens are in government, there'll be a nature crisis. It's as simple as that. Uh, so right, challenges we face, climate and nature crisis, poverty and disadvantage. I mean, is town planning really going to tackle poverty and disadvantage? It might help in some peripheral ways. It's not really the heart of it. Um, stark health inequalities. Health inequalities solved by town planning. Really, maybe a small degree of impact, but it, it's, it's, it's fantasy stuff, really. So the local living and 20 minute neighborhood concepts aim to create places where people can meet the majority of their daily needs within a reasonable distance of their home by walking, wheeling or cycling. Assumption there they're talking about uh, able bodied people. Right. So uh, the 20 minute neighborhoods, 20 minute neighborhood concept is one method of supporting local living. Now, when I hear that, I just think fad. Fashion. Why 20 minutes? What about the 18 minute neighborhoods? How about 21 minute neighborhoods? It's obviously, it's, it's just something that's been plucked out of the air and has taken on a life of its own. And anyone who wants to show that they're up to date and in line with the latest thinking in town planning, you've got to talk about 20 minute uh, neighborhoods. So it's a 20 minute neighborhood concept aims to provide access to the majority of daily needs within 20 minutes uh, walk, wheel, or, or cycle. I think with cycling, it doesn't matter how many cycle lanes you put in, probably a majority of people, I mean, particularly older people, are just not going to want to cycle. If you've got families, young children, whatever, maybe that's not practical. What do I say about this 20 minute neighborhood concept, though? If you imagine, say, Tesco are deciding where to put a, a shop, shouldn't they say, let's see how many people are within a 20 minute walk of it? No, because that would be really crude, simplistic, and amateurish. What they would get is a full statistical distribution of travel differences, uh, distances and times by various means from residents to that shop. To just go from a single metric of 20 minutes uh, you know, walking time, I say that's incredibly simplistic and unprofessional. Um, but that seems to be what, what's taken over well, the whole planet in terms of uh, town planning. So let's go on some more about the benefits of 20 minute neighborhoods. Again, benefit number one. You guessed it, climate and the environment. Anyway, uh, number two, health and well-being. Well, I think maybe in terms of well-being, getting out and about a bit, seeing a few different parts, coming to different places, change of scenery, that might be quite important. It talks about the local economy. It's going to boost your local economy somehow. Now, there's a real contradiction in this document, and it talks about the importance of sustaining and regenerating town centres, city centres, but also it wants people not to travel very far to access services, including shops. So how you can't have your cake and eat it. If you're saying, right, if you're in a big city, we don't want you traveling into the city center all the time. We want your needs to be met locally. 
that you can't combine that with saying that you're going to regenerate and increase economic activity in the city centre. It's just contradictory. If someone's going to go out for a coffee and you know, do some shopping or whatever, they can't do it in two places at once. So again, just a, a sort of fantasy element to this. And improving quality of life comes in as well. They, they think it would help to improve social interaction. So for example, if I went to the local shop on my roller skates, there might be more social interaction than if I jumped in my car and went you know, half a mile to Tesco instead to do my shopping. That might well be true. It might generate more social interaction if I went to my roller skates. How significant would that affect me overall? I'm not sure it would be uh, huge. Now, needless to say, being a government document, you get these sort of diagrams there. It's the sort of thing you get from, if, if you put a group of people in the function room of a hotel, have someone at the front with a flipboard, give everyone a big piece of paper and some marker pens, and they, they just put their heads together and state the obvious. Come up with things like um, movement is important because you need to be able to move around by walking or going on your bike. You need public transport and you need traffic and parking. I mean, is that not just so blatantly obvious? Why do you need to pay a graphic designer to uh, to put this in a, a, anyway so there's lots of it's a government document so it's inevitable we're going to have that sort of thing right the next thing it talks about the united nations sustainable development goals all sort of these ideas as i say that this doesn't come from mrs Mackay at number 73 this comes from international bodies it's not particularly forced onto the scottish government or forced onto local councils it's just that they don't really have their own vision uh, for their uh, environment and they don't really want to listen to what local people have got to say. I mean, what do they know about it? They're just you know, blithering amateurs. So you need international bodies to tell you what to do and then give you a pat on the back when you've done it. Local people are, are really just uh, just pawns in the game. Now, I've got another, another page here, more fantastic graphic design. It explains that the 20-minute neighbourhood, I thought it was walking 20 minutes to the shops or the Dr. Seuss River, but it's actually 10 minutes there and 10 minutes back. And it explains in this document that some people walk at different speeds. So you can't really tell how far people go in 10 minutes. And some people are, are better at walking than others. Some people are more willing to walk than others. I mean, it really is rocket science that uh, getting into here. Uh, just look at the, uh, the last bit here. It says local living in 20 minute neighborhoods are not restrictive on people's behavior. They're obviously aware that that's the criticism leveled at them. This is about stopping people traveling around. But they say it's not restrictive on people's behavior. Well, we'll see about that. Let's see what's uh, coming next. The rest of the 78 page document, I'm not going to go through because it is unbelievably repetitive. It just goes through stating the obvious time and time again with different expensive graphic designs in it. And in terms of sustainability, I'd like to apologize to the planet for printing this whole thing out because I was expecting to find more in it to talk about, but it just goes around in circles repeating itself. Now, there's a few examples in the document as well of where 20 minute neighbourhoods have been implemented or there's plans to implement them in different councils around Scotland. So in this example, there's one theme that is absolutely central. And that theme is anti-car, anti-car. They talk about transferring space, the use of space. Doesn't matter what you transfer it to, cycle lanes, wider footpaths, whatever. But the common theme is it's always taking it away from cars. Uh, and motor vehicles in general. So their mission is to obstruct driving and parking. Less and less roads to drive on, uh, the roads that would be more and more difficult, slower and slower to drive on, and make it more and more difficult to park your car. They talk about new housing developments and boast about them being zero parking. In other words, the council's providing housing, sort of on the condition, you can live there as long as you don't own a car. But remember, this is not about restricting your behavior at all. And it's also not just about tackling congestion. Obviously, if you're a city council, traffic congestion is an issue you need to address uh, by various ways, by road management, uh, by public transport, uh, maybe by making better roads. You find none of that in, this, uh, in these 20 minute neighborhoods, that's for sure. But the overall theme I say is any direction to restrict car use. 20 minute neighborhoods, this sort of thing is one aspect, the ultra low emission zones are another. And the thing that really, clinches it for me, makes it clear that this is anti-car, plain and simple. It's these people who now say that car tires produce pollution. Little bits of rubber come off them. So even if you've got an electric car with zero emissions uh, at the point of use, if you like, it's, we still don't want it because these bits of rubber come off the tires and it, it's polluting 
I don't really buy it, I say. It's just an anti-car ideology. So cycle paths, footpath widening. And I think they really do believe that if you make enough cycle lanes, then you know the el elderly ladies in your area are going to get bikes and are going to start riding around on them. In other words, they believe that just the amount of cycling and walking is going to absolutely explode if they just provide you know, nice enough footpaths for people walk to walk on. Now, I'm not saying those things will have no effect at all, but I think they grossly overestimate the potential difference that it would make. Now, obviously, there have been cases in England where 20-minute neighbourhoods have been introduced and they've sort of got a board around them and you're, not, you're only allowed to drive your car from your neighbourhood to neighbouring neighbourhoods a certain number of times a week or a month. So it is point-blank restricting travel by car. I mean, I mean, these schemes in general restrict travel by car, by the other, but, but this is just, you know, point blank. You are not allowed to drive your car from one place uh, to another. Now, there's no council in Scotland that's countenancing that publicly at the moment. But I would imagine, give this time, that's what will, be, will begin to happen. Uh, I'll explain a bit more about that in a minute. So this is um, one of their responses, I think this is Edinburgh, where they're responding to local residents who've expressed concerns about 20 minute neighborhoods. They said, some of you raised concerns that this project might limit freedom of movement for local people. This project is about making it easier for you to access facilities and services by walking, wheeling, cycling, or using public transport, and will not restrict you or anyone else from getting to or from any other part of the city. Now, is that true? Well, it sort of is true. There won't be a law that says, if you live in Leith, you're not allowed to go to Murrayfield. Uh, but it might come in that you're not allowed to drive your car there or you're only allowed to drive your car there once a week or something like that. Because this whole 20 minute neighbourhood policy, if you look at the implementation, it's not about facilities, it's not about, oh right, we need a school here so people don't have to travel so far for a primary school or we need an extra doctor's surgery here. It's not really about that. It's about transport. Uh, it's about encouraging walking and cycling, which I don't think is really going to work on a huge scale, but the main thrust, as I say, is restricting driving. Now, this is my key point here. I think this is absolutely crucial. I haven't heard anyone say this, uh, but I think this is absolutely key. Right. If your mission is to reduce the amount of time people need to, for example, walk to get to the facilities that they need, you would not define neighborhoods. You don't need to say, right, that's your neighborhood. So within your neighborhood, we need a shop, a doctor's surgery, a primary school, a this, that, and the other, a park, a play. You wouldn't do that. You would take your, your map of your council area and you'd say, right, schools, primary schools, let's see where they are. Let's see where, uh, where people live that are too far away from a primary school. And let's see if we need to put a new primary school in. And maybe you decide, you look at your map, you decide, yeah, we need a new primary school there. And that is the efficient, rational, logical, professional way to do it. If you divide your city into neighbourhoods with a board around them and say, right, we need a primary school to serve this neighbourhood, that becomes a very inefficient way of doing it. Similarly for any other sort of facility. So, so when it comes to park, say, you shouldn't say, right, that's a neighbourhood, so we need to park in it. You look at the whole city and you say, right, we've got a park here, we've got a park. We maybe should have a park here. Um, and if that happened to be on the border of two neighbourhoods or at the edge of one or if it's got people, some people who go to it in one neighbourhood, some people in another, that would be fine. That would be the most efficient way to do it. So defining 20 minute neighbourhoods is counterproductive in terms of providing services and facilities within people's easy access. Right. I hope that makes sense. So the whole idea of 20 minute neighbourhoods, if your target is to put facilities close to people, it's counterproductive. So what is it really for? Is it that they haven't worked out what I've just said? They haven't worked out that's a re that, that is an inefficient way of trying to provide local services. I find it hard to believe that this worldwide movement does not contain anyone who can actually work out that that's not the best way to do it. Um, so why is it? I think the reason is you define the neighborhoods in order immediately or in the future to start restricting travel between them. Restricting travel by car, basically, between them. So what's the thing with cars? Why is pe some people so anti-car? When you think about a car, often it's something you own, you've worked for, and it's for the use of you and your family. You choose the type of car that you like, or you can afford, and all cars come in all different shapes and sizes and costs. 
and it gives you a sense of independence, freedom and self-sufficiency. Right, all those things I would say tend to go with people of a more sort of right-wing political viewpoint, more conservative viewpoint. Uh, now, people of a more left-wing viewpoint, their attitudes, their, their ethos will be more along the lines of, it's really good if the state provides it so everyone gets the same and we can all be equal, everyone sits together on the same bus, going to the same place. Um, and, th and that just fits with, the, with the, the ethos more comfortably. Now, bringing the issue of climate change, I think that explains why people of a left-wing persuasion, they're really, all oh, right, let's stop those cars, because they really don't like cars in any case. They like the idea of everyone being all the same on a bus. So they're very keen to attack cars. Whereas people of different political persuasion, they like the idea of you know, freedom and self-sufficiency, independence. They're quite important values to them. So they're less keen on seeing cars uh, pushed out of viability. Now, these different attitudes, and some of the people, a lot of people who've got this very anti-car view, they tend to be young urban singles. And they think, why would anyone ever need a car? I walk to the shop, I get the bus into the city centre, I haven't got three kids to trace around, I don't need to get a, a massive shop once a week for the whole family. Uh, you know, we don't need to take the whole family on holiday, we don't need to take the car to the beach in the summer, etc., etc. Totally different uh, lifestyle. Now, obviously, this has been something from the Scottish government and from uh, councils in Scotland. They obviously have to uh, use children in the process, which I, this really, really irritates me. More than irritates me, it's just wrong what they do. So the council will go into a local primary school and ascertain the views of the primary school pupils on town planning issues. Now, you can imagine what's going to happen, can't you? They'll go in. They'll basically leave the kids by the nose. They'll, they'll put a load of things on the screen and say, these are the sort of things that are interesting. Do you like having parks? Oh, yes. Do you like big noisy cars driving past you fast when you're trying to play? Oh, no, we don't like that. They don't have questions like, do you like going to the beach with your mum and dad in the car? No, they wouldn't ask that. So the children are led by the nose to give the answers that the adults want. So it's using the children in the cause of the adults, which I think is completely wrong. Now I'm going to finish my survey on 20 minute neighborhoods with a bit of field work. So out we go. We're here in Wester Hills and I'm going to show you the impact of some of the most useless bike lanes in the world. So how about this? We've got bike lanes here in order to help bikes avoid what is a really, really, really quiet side road. There's virtually no traffic on it. So there'll be no problem at all cycling on that. But instead they put a se separate cycle lane in here, which is completely pointless. Well, no, I'll take that back actually. It's not completely pointless. It provides uh, residents with extra parking space. So as they're looking at making this into a 20 minute neighborhood, there'll be even more cycle lanes. So I guess there'll be even more off-road parking for the residents. I credit where it's due. The council's made a lot of really good improvements around this area over the last few years, but there's still plenty to do. And you know, it's not too difficult to see where work is needed. And the really obvious things that could be done and nothing to do with 20 minute neighborhoods. And one has to suspect the 20 minute neighborhoods are just going to be a distraction from getting on with what clearly needs doing in this area. Just to finish off a little curiosity here. So if you look on the right, we've got the curb stones and they're sort of angled perfectly so you can run your bike up and you can see the mark in the middle where people have been running their bike up over the years. That was a really good design to save you having to take it up the steps. And we can now see that right next to this specially designed curb to wheel your bike up, the council has installed a horrible yellow bike rail.